Fast Music Hall with Bing Crosby, Mary Martin, Victor Borga, John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, the Music Maids, and Hal. Bing's distinguished visitors for this evening include Ronald Regan, star of Warner Brothers Pictures, Spike Jones and his city slickers in person, and Sabu the Elephant Boy. And here's Bing Crosby. Cuck, Katie. Oh, beautiful Katie. You're the only good, 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 good girl that I adore. And when the m- m- moon shines over the cacao shed, I'll be waving at the k- 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 kitchen door. Katie, beautiful Katie, you're the only good g- g- girl that I adore. And when the moon shines over the cow shed, I'll be waiting at the Christmas c- girl to see it store. Welcome to the old Kraft Music Hall, friends, and greetings and appreciation to the fighting men of the United States and the United Nations, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen at sea and ashore in every strategic quarter of the globe, to whom this uh, chivalry is being short-waved. Just think, Bing, it's, it's getting to be winter down in Australia, and around here signs of spring are everywhere. Yeah, they tell me they're putting up signs of spring in all the theatrical boarding houses from Hollywood to New York. Oh, you're kidding. No, no. These signs of spring say, uh, don't send out your laundry till after you've checked with your draft board. <laughs> well, the signs of spring I meant were women's hats. Oh, they are a sign of something. Off the face hats, over the eye hats, under the chin hats, and around That's the ear hats. I think they're kind of cute. You like them, huh? <laughs> Why don't they come out with a startling innovation like an on-the-head hat? Has that been done? <laughs> Well, that's impractical. With a hat on her head, how could a woman show off her new hairdo? What is this off-the-face business, anyhow? Was there ever an on-the-face hat? Well, certainly. There was, huh? The Army has lots of on-the-face models. Only they call them gas masks. Oh, I see what you mean. Mm. The Army's got lots of everything, Mary. They got tanks rolling out of our factories a train load a day. 3,500 airplanes a month. We're up to 3,500? Mm-hmm. Gee. Yep, 3,500. That's getting pretty close to a perfect score. Well, what's a perfect score? Well, a couple of more thousand. When a bell rings, we tilt Tokyo and Berlin lights up. <laughs> At the moment, John Scott and his group light up with a little introduction for Mary. Life was so calm and serene. Life was reggae till that unlucky day. I happened to read that magazine. Why did I read that advertisement? Where it said, since I rumble, Jim thinks I'm sublime. Why, oh, why? Did I ever try when I didn't have the talent and I didn't have the money and teacher did not have the time? Oh, what the Murray taught me dancing in the hurry. I had a week to spare. He showed me the groundwork, the walk for groundwork, and told me to take it from there. Arthur Murray then advised me not to worry. It'd have come out all right. He wasn't mistaken. The balls I've taken, I don't know my left from my right. All the people around me can all sing a one and a two and a three. But any resemblance to all things is just coincidental to me. Cause all the murder tells me dancing in a hurry. 
time, so I take a chance. To me it resembles the night they tremble, but he guarantees it's the dance. Turkey trot, fork of hot, don't know which, don't know what, jitterbug, funny hot, long as you've got a rut. Walk the dog to the clock, Lindy, how do you drop? Fall the jack back to back, cheek to cheek till you're weak. Oh, you've heard of that lover, well, jack it up over, make way for the queen. Thank you, Mary. With most of his recent, uh, his most recent released Jungle Book opening in Hollywood this evening, New Universal's picture young, young star Sabu hasn't been in the old Kraft music hall in over a year and a half. That's right around the time he was appearing in The Thief of Baghdad. Ah, Baghdad. The very mention of the place fills me with a strange and curable longing. Homesickness, I suppose you might call it, but then I suppose my love of everything Oriental goes back to my first visit to Cairo. Cairo, Illinois. <laughs> but I digress. I was speaking of Baghdad. Ah, uh, that was the Baghdad that I knew. The Baghdad of my youth. How well do I remember that small swap shop and motel that I had back of Cutgrave Caliph's saltwater taffy shop. <laughs> Sabu was one of my two assistants. I recall the morning I was practicing my oriental basket trick. My other assistant was inside the basket, and Sabu, who was beside me, said, uh, <laughs> Sub Crosby, what do you need? Two assistants? Oh, you shall see. Now, stand aside. I'm about to do the trick. Very simple. All I do is plunge these three razor-sharp swords through the basket. Apparently, through my assistant. So. Oh. Oh. Now, open the basket lid, and you will find my assistant still in one piece. Right? Wrong. <laughs> I can't understand it. I lose more assistance that way. <laughs> Do not despair, Sab. You are still the only American faker in all Baghdad. You will be proud to know that I have finally learned your wonderful trick with the magic carpet. Look, Sab, in the other room. The magic carpet is four feet off the floor. Hmm, yes. How did you manage to sweep that much dust under one carpet? <laughs> Someday you must teach me your system, sir. How do you get your carpet to fly? The moths hold hands. <laughs> Baghdad is a strange place. Did you hear the terrific crash last night when Jumbo climbed to the top of the elephant pen and jumped? Jumbo did that? Why? Jumbo thought he was Dumbo. <laughs> Look, two people have just entered the shop, Sabu. One is wearing a zeet sheet with a pleat seat. <laughs> Who is the other? A beautiful girl named Princess Martini. How would you know her name? Oh, her name is written on her sarong. Princess Martini, Golden Gloves, 1941. Oh, that's the girl. <laughs> A little tired, aren't you? <laughs> I am uh, Princess Martini. Are you with Olive or Pearl Onion? That's a Gibson, I forgot. You look as if you had a terrible trip, Princess Martini. I did. My camel and I stumbled into an abandoned tiger pit. Someone had dug along the trail. Tiger pit? Tiger pit? Uh, Sabu, uh, do tigers have pits? I don't know. I never had a tiger. <laughs> I stand before you, Swanee Crosby, a beautiful woman who needs help. The harem. The harem is revolting. Yes, I know, but good fun. <laughs> Wait a minute while I take a look at my crystal ball. I see a large, formless shape hovering over you. Oh, you must mean uh, Trotter. Trotter, the tent wearer. Yeah. <laughs> that boy, sir, got a great shape with a plump slump. <laughs> Somebody call me. I'm available for crystal readings. Why, I thought you were a snake charmer. Do I look like a snake charmer? <laughs> no, you look more like an elephant, boy. <laughs> Pardon my intrusion, but I am the Sheikh Hot Tents Carpenter. I have come for my little harem hotfoot, Princess Martini. Oh, desert doll. Oh, Persian pigeon. Why have you from me departed? 
What grounds had you to ever fear me? My own, my own, my own Jean Tierney. Oh, that is not true. Haven't I always been a good wife to you? Well, I don't know. I haven't received a report on you lately. That settles it. I shall fly away to Hollywood. Will you take me with you on your magic carpet, Sabu? I would be very happy to, Princess Martini. Say, Sabu, uh, this telegram just came for you. You shan't be able to fly to Hollywood with Princess Martini on your magic carpet after all. Oh, why not? This telegram is from the Baghdad Interceptor Command. Oh. Yes, I've just been grounded. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sabu. The boy from Baghdad comes now. The boy from Peoria, Ken Carpenter. These days, all of our clocks are set ahead to wartime, and many a household is set to a time-saving, labor-saving schedule. So let me suggest a big help with nutritious meals that must be ready on the dock. Keep in your refrigerator a two-pound box of Velveeta. That's Kraft's nutritious cheese food, rich in milk nutrients, digestible as milk itself. Toasted sandwiches filled with Velveeta's delicious cheddar cheese goodness are quick and practically a whole lunch. Smooth cheese sauce, speedily made by melting Velveeta, adds goodness and fine nutrition to eggs, seafood, and vegetables. Sliced Velveeta with fresh fruit is an easy, delectable dessert, and mighty wholesome, too. All of these ideas, you'll find, fit right in with the suggestions given in the federal government's official food guide. Now, Uncle Sam asks you to pay particular attention to planning well-balanced meals. So follow the government's official food guide in making out your menus. Right foods can help build a strong, victorious nation. I miss you Since you went away, dear miss you more than I can say, dear. Daytime, nighttime, nothing I do can make me forget that I still love you. I kiss you in my dreams I kiss you Whispering Darling, how I miss you Tell me Do you ever miss me As I miss I kiss you, whispering, darling, how I miss you, tell me, do you ever miss me? Some of our clients probably know Victor Borger, the young Danish pianist, wit and raconteur, recently familiarized us with his version of the up-to-the-minute English. 
This is a little thing known as the upper language. And as I understand it, it's really catching on, Victor. I'm very happy to know that many people are using my new invention, the upper language. But I have heard some mistakes, and I think it's better that I'll explain it to you so you won't make those mistakes in using this language. First of all, I want to explain to you why I invented it. You know, in wartime, everything goes up. Everything gets more expensive if you pay 10 cents today for something, you pay 11 tomorrow. So you add one to every price. Sometimes you add more, but we start out with one. Couldn't do it less. And uh, the only thing that hasn't gone up yet is the language. And uh, that's why I come in. <laughs> I made the upper language. It means that every number in the language gets up with one, you know? You, you add one to each number in the language. There are many numbers in the language. Maybe you never notice it, but there are. And I'll give you a couple of examples how it would be. A word like wonderful, there's a number one in that wonderful. It would be tudorful. <laughs> this is very simple. <laughs> then we have create. It would be crinine. <laughs> Before will be B5. <laughs> and, uh, of course, lieutenant will be lieutenant. <laughs> Promotion. <laughs> then, a word like tennis would be eleven, is of course, and uh, double talk would be triple talk, and so on and so on. Then, I could mention a little sentence. If you say, I ate a tenderloin with my fork, ate tenderloin with my fork, it would be, I nine and eleven tenderloin with my five. <laughs> This is the idea, and uh, I would like to read a little story to you, so you can see, <laughs> in the other language. And later on, we have a little song written, so you can hear, we can sing, and we can talk, and we can do everything with this <laughs> language. This little story is called, All This and Heaven Free. <laughs> And it starts like this. Twice upon a time, a man arrived here in sunny California. He came all the way from Eleven Tennessee. It was a little bit difficult, Tennessee. But... Two of his legs were broken, so he had only two left. He came here to an institution. Three rest and recuper nine. <laughs> this fellow was a 50 elevener. You see, I have to explain this to you because this is really difficult. He was a 49er. <laughs> but a 49er is a 50 tenner, but a tenner is an elevener, so a 49er would be a 50 elevener. <laughs> It should really be a 60-12er, but that's too much. <laughs> this story gets pretty involved, so I think I'd rather show how the upper language sounds in daily conversation. And uh, lovely Mary Martin... Martin... What do you mean? Mary Ma 11. <laughs> Fine, that's the new name. Mary Ma 11 will help me out. So... You can hear how it sounds in daily conversation. The following conversation takes place in a little house in Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore, one more. Baltimore, one more. Mary, my daughter, I'm thirsty. Will you bring me a bottle of eight up? Oh, I'm busy, Father. I only have three hands. Say, did you go to the, uh, you know, take the course in the uh, first eight, the second nine today? Yes. I met a beautiful little Lute Levenant. Tell me, Mary, was it love at second sight? Father. My dear child, tell me the truth. As I told you twice before, <laughs> you have only two fathers, and that's me. <laughs> Come on, tell me. Well, he's, he's just 
three, three to thine. Now, my daughter, may I take this opportunity <laughs> to tell you who is knocking at the door? Maybe it's opportunity. No, no, opportunity only knocks twice. <laughs> Come in. How do you do? I'm, uh, I'm Lute Levin at Double Crosby. <laughs> Mr. Little Levenant, will you give me some information Please. about yourself? Are you married or double? I'm strictly on the up and up. Good, then you couldn't be mad. <laughs> May I ask you, on my daughter's be one and a half, are you sincere? I think Mary is tutorful. I don't give three cents whether you think she is one, two, three, or four of her. Are you sincere? Do I look three-faced? <laughs> I wish you did, then I could take my charge. <laughs> However, I leave both of you three alone, and I think you make a tutorful treble. Trilou, Trilou. Mary, you are my two and only. And you are. You are my tutorful little little eleven and. And I come from Timbuk Three. You are my tutorful little little eleven and. You're the only two five me. It's higher praises that he deserves, so we sing his praises in higher words. You are my tutorful little little eleven and, and I come from Timbuk Three. There's a handsome lieutenant, and he's mine all oh mine. No word is high enough, no praise to the sky enough. So I had to raise all the word by one. He is much more than wonderful, so I add one. I call him tutorful. That's one more than wonderful. In fact, he just three, three divine. He is my tutorful little Luther Levin, and he comes from Timbuktree. He is my tutorful little Luther Levin, he's the only two by me. It's praise higher that he deserves, so I sing his praises in higher verse. He is my tutorful little Luther Levin, and he comes from Timbuktree. Does he come from California? No, no. Does he come from Eleven No, no. Does he come from Washington? No, no. He comes from Timbuktu. It's higher praises that he deserves. So I sing his praises in higher words. He is my tutorful little Lute Eleven and he comes from Timbuktu. And he comes from Timbuktu. Time marches back. 1927. Calvin Coolidge is president of these United States. 1927. The 18th Amendment to the Constitution is being widely ignored as flask-toting flappers and finale hoppers cause grave concern for the future of the younger generation. Thinking men with growing children are saying... You know, Mary, when it comes to drawing those flappers and those finale hoppers, nobody can touch John Hell Jr. Oh, he sure is popular. Mm -hmm. But, Harry, why do you suppose they call the boy flappers finale hoppers? Well, you see, these finale hoppers, they show up carrying a slight load. They crash the joint just before home, sweet home, and they finagle the flaps from the guys who are sleeping it off in the locker room. You know, Harry, I wish I could Charleston with you without wearing shin guards. You can relax, baby. The Charleston's all washed up. Right now, I'm learning the black bottom. The black bottom? Mm-hmm. Is that the name of a dance? Well, it's a fair pie, too. A black bottom, a new twister, sure, got a mundo. Oh, Harry, thing. where do you learn such things? Oh, it's a little speakeasy around the corner. I like to there's know. a what? Uh, there's a little uh, speakeasy around the corner. You know, next to the soda fountain where I get my malted and tuna fish on whole wheat every noon. And I like to talk Yeah, and to I that. suppose you put your ear to the wall and hear them singing and dancing the black bottom. Oh, you don't even have to put your ear to the wall. The whole building shakes. It's kind of a rickety building. Hmm. It's kind of a rickety alibi, too. You trying to tell me you think I sit around in speakeasies? 
Well, I might think that if I didn't happen to know, you couldn't get into one. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. Mm-hmm. I remember the day you suggested a glass of wine to celebrate our anniversary. We rang the bell at six places, not a one of them would let you in. Well, you don't want to go around kicking about that. You said yourself you liked the chocolate soda better. Yeah, we stood in the rain and the man opened the little peephole and you said, um, Hello, Charlie, remember me? And he said, Nope, this is a private residence. And then we went on to someplace else. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? How all those places suddenly turned into private residences. Uh, one thing struck me as strange. You mean when a mounted policeman came out with his horse? <laughs> yeah. I wondered if you noticed it, too. Say, have you heard Paul Whiteman play, uh, Through the black of night, I got to go where you are. And if it's wrong or right... Sounds wrong to me. Well, not the way Paul Wipen plays it. You know that trio he's got with him, those, uh, uh what you, the rhythm boys. <laughs> Do you like them? Don't you? Well, there's three too many of them. It's a trio. I know. Listen, they don't do bad with Mississippi mud. Happy as a cow just a chewing on a cut and wearing the dog's feet on the Mississippi mud. Happy as a cow just a chewing on a cut and wearing the dog's feet on the Two of the boys aren't bad. That little old fat one with a symbol that annoys me. <laughs> what do you keep hitting that symbol for? Listen, if any of his whispered warbling seats do, the kid's through. <laughs> well, I don't like that jazz stuff anyway. I like songs like, um, Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm blue. My disposition depends on you. Oh, it does too, Harry. Does what? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I took one look at you. That's all I meant to do. And then my heart stood still. Honestly, Harry. Remember the first night you held my hand? It was in the balcony at Showboat. Oh, yeah. And all evening on the way home, you kept singing. We could make believe. I love you. Only make believe. That you love me Others find peace of mind In pretending Couldn't you, couldn't I, couldn't we Make believe our lips Are blending In a phantom kiss Or two or three Might as well make believe I love you For to tell the truth I do Yes, friends, for make-believe. And here's Ken Carpenter for real. Today, we're looking to the experts in many fields to point the way to total victory. For instance, guided by the advice of our government's nutrition experts, millions of homemakers are setting out meals designed to build strong Americans. And these homemakers follow the federal government's official food guide. Since this valuable food guide lists dairy foods as a must for every day, we bring you a little report on one famous dairy product, Kraft Cheese Food Velveeta. Listen. Velveeta is a rich source of milk calcium and milk phosphorus, food minerals that help build sound teeth and bones. This cheese food contributes milk protein, too, that helps build strong muscles. The milk fat in Velveeta helps make it a fine energy food and also an excellent food source of vitamin A. Velveeta, likewise, is an excellent food source of vitamin G an important part of the bee complex. And this cheese food is digestible as milk. But on top of all that, Velveeta is mighty good eating. Rich yet mild cheddar cheese goodness. Swell for sandwiches, cheese sauce, snacks, dessert. So count Velveeta in on your well-balanced menus. But learn, too, about all the foods that help build a strong nation. To get your free copy of the federal government's official food guide... Write direct to the Office of Defense, Health, and Welfare Services in Washington. By serving the right foods every day, three times a day, you can help win the total victory. Oh, my. 
That's a nice tune, isn't it, Dr. Cross? What's a nice tune? Well, this one, listen. I'm listening. That's a great tune, Carp. If the firm gets behind it, it ought to be a smash. Which brings us back to the Kraft Music Hall involving Ronald Regan, Spike Jones and his city slickers, John Scott Trotter, and at the moment, Mary Martin and Friend. In apple blossom time I'll be with you To change your name to mine One day in May I'll come and say Happy the bride That the sun shines on today what a wonderful wedding there will be. What a wonderful day for you and me. Church bells will chime. You will be mine in apple blossom. Blossom time. I'll be with you and change your name. One day in May, we both shall say, Happy the bride. That the sun shines on today. What a wonderful wedding there will be. What a wonderful day for you and me. Church bells will chime. Pursuant to our frequently outlined policy of spotlighting the talented individuals in John Scott Trotter's versatile organization, we turn to a brand new group that's recently been clicking solid with the cats. This is a group under the barrel house baton of the regularly accredited drummer of Trotter's troupe. That would be Spike Jones, guiding genius of the much heralded Spike Jones and his uh, city slickers. Slickers include such other uh, Trotter regulars as Perry Bodkin, guitar and banjo. King Jackson trombone, also Don Anderson trumpet, Hank Stern on the tuba, Stanley Reitzman piano, and vocals by Dale Porter, formerly of the foursome. As music lovers know, the arrangements of Spike Jones and his city slickers are so intricate in their contrapuntal refinements, so subtle, so gossamer sheared and lacy in their harmonic structure, that I have asked Spike himself to give us an example. Spike Jones and his city slickers playing his recently recorded and soon to be released version of Little Bo Peep Has uh, Lost Her Jeep. Jackson had a girl he fondly called Bo Peep. 
Now Jackson didn't have a car, so drove by in a jeep. They took a ride, the time flew by, and Bo Peep was in heaven. Still Jackson cried, Bo Peep, this jeep's got to be in camp by 11. So little Bo Peep has lost her jeep and don't know where to find it. Her soldier boy took it back to camp and left Bo Peep behind it. It didn't have doors, the seats were hard, but Bo Peep never minded. It didn't ride like a Cadillac, she wondered who designed it. Roller coaster nearly killed her, aeroplane they never thrilled her. But with Jackson at the wheel, she got that jeep, jeep, jeep appeal. Now little Bo Peep wants to find her jeep and find her soldier chappy. If it comes to jugging his old wrist buggy, Bo Peep will be happy. <laughs> Now little Bo Peep, she lost her jeep, her boyfriend made an error, he let her drive, goodness sakes alive, that Bo Peep, she's a terror, with throttle pushed down, she tore through town, the red lights didn't stop her, the soldier knew that they both were through, when she sideswiped the copper. She's lost her jeep, oh my, why must her go in? Now a little jeep is laying in it, and the guardhouse has her There to corner Fred off his watch or something. <laughs> that is really magnificent, Spike. That's the kind of music that will live. Full of such softness and such polish and finesse, such culture, such refinement. What say, Lillis? <laughs> that looks to me like swing music's here to stay. It sure is, Lillis. Wonderful world, wonderful yeah, world. Yeah. <laughs> The other day, I went up to a farmer while he was milking his cow to ask him for the time. Uh, what did he say, Spike? Well, sir, there he sat. Yeah. A swinging and a swaying and a milking. And he says, eight to the bar, Jackson. And she's sending solid. <laughs> Put the cover on the corn crib, Mother. We've shucked enough for tonight. <laughs> and the cover is on as Spike Jones and his city slickers play. Pass the biscuits, Miranda. <laughs> Set beneath the hickory tree, there's an ornery rifle shooting mountaineer. He loves mountain fuse, and he also loves good food. And when he goes home to supper, you will hear. Oh, pass a biscuit, Mirandy. I'm just as hungry as them. Pass a gravy, Mirandy. I need some pop to stop them in. Since nine o'clock, I've been sitting on a rock, a shooting everything in sight. I shot the boys and a dozen Martin boys, shooting is a man and at the time. Oh, pass the biscuits for Randy, pass them and kiss me goodbye. They're so heavy, Randy, I feel like I'm a gonna die. Then he heard a rifle crack, and a bullet hit the shack, and another broke the dishes on the shelf. So he grabbed his trusty gun, cause a battle had begun, and he knew that he must then protect himself. Oh, pass the biscuit, my landy. I'm a gonna load up my gun. I'll use your biscuits for bullets. I'll put them marbles on the run. 
before the tongue of black powder in his gun, slammed the biscuits into place. Then he took aim, oh my gracious, what a shame, bang, the gun exploded in his face. As the bandits around you, I know that I'm gonna die. Darn your biscuits, Miranda. recently awarded star billing for his fine work in the Warner Brothers picture, King's Row, is also soon to be seen in something called Juke Girl. These, with a picture called Desperate Journey, will probably wind up Regan's film career pro tem, because on April 19th, Ronald Regan joins the United States Armed Forces. Just what branch of the service are you going into, Ronnie? Well, after five years in the reserves, Bing, I'm receiving a commission in the cavalry. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I think they should give every man in the Army a commission. Oh, man. <laughs> How could they give every man in the Army a commission? Oh, it wouldn't have to be much. Just a little something, say, 30 cents a jack. <laughs> <laughs> Too many guys willing to do it free. Look, you being an ex-radio announcer in Big Ten football circles ought to qualify for you for a spot in the, we'll say, like an observer in the air call, huh? <laughs> well, it's been over four years since I've been behind a sports announcer's mic, Bing. Isn't that just like radio? Wasting a fine actor like you doing silly old sports broadcasts. 
And they could have used you in those daytime serials. Yeah, it would have been... <laughs> would have been happy casting, too. Ronald Regan's capable characterization of one of those happy-go-lucky, misunderstood citizens would fit admirably into any one of these exciting mid-morning matinees. Oh, in Fancy's flight, I can almost hear the announcer now saying... The makers of Vagabond Varnish for walls, floors, and pancakes <laughs> present the dreary drama Heartbreak Hospice, the true-life story of Ronnie, boy exterminator. <laughs> And remember, friends, a vagabond varnish doesn't give you a glossy finish and a fine glow. Your hospital expenses will be cheerfully refunded. <laughs> and now to Ronnie, boy exterminator of Heartbreak Hospice. Well... <laughs> It seems like only yesterday that poor Ronnie drank potato bug spray, thinking it was orange pico. But don't worry, Ronnie is all right now. The police gave him a third degree and pumped it out of him. And how about Ronnie's fiancée, Marva? Are her troubles never over? That is what Ronnie wonders as he says to her. Marva, my darling, let me take you away from all this. The house seems so empty, so cold and drafty. Since the oil burner blew up. No, Ronald. Here I shall stay. This is my home. And I'm stuck with it. I tell you, Marva, you don't belong here anymore. Now that Claude has proven that John knifed Oscar after Henrietta's nervous breakdown, when Daphne told Murdo that Consuela had received the mysterious message from Paulette, telling Sharon that Fleetwood had secretly been operating a gin mill in Clarabella's backyard, right in the shadow of Mr. Grunsmere's counterfeit money plant. You know, dear, things really haven't been the same in Heartbreak Hospice since that night 20 years ago when I sent the grocery boy out on an errand. Never to see him again. Come in. Well, here I am. Who are you? Harvey, the grocery boy. Where did you come from? Finkel's Delicatessen. I have your liver, you remember? Mm. After 20 years, you finally came back. What took you so long? Who told me to hurry? You must go now, Harvey. Marva and I want to be alone. Why? Well, can't you see Marva's mopping the floor? Well, why don't she use a mop? She'll never get that grit out of her hair. <laughs> oh, please go away, Harvey. Things are terrible at Heartbreak Hospice. Last week we had 15 catastrophes. 15 catastrophes? It's pretty bad, huh? Two below our usual quota. <laughs> Who's that laying over in the corner? Marva's grandpa. Oh, I thought he was going to swear off. He did swear off, but only off pretzels. <laughs> Marva, what about your Uncle Veracos? Uncle Veracos was a vain man. Yes. <laughs> Two days ago, he fell from a 12-story building. What happened? He was a flagpole sitter. He always wanted his own way, and the pole finally gave in. <laughs> fell 12 stories, huh? Yes. Uncle Vericos was terribly let down. Yes, of course, of course. It could have been worse. His company was very efficient. Efficient? How? As he passed the sixth floor, they handed him his compensation insurance. Good firm, good firm. <laughs> Sometimes I wouldn't know how to get along if it wasn't for Ronnie. Yesterday, we had a short circuit, and he came and lengthened it. Good boy, good boy. But from now on, Marva, you will share your troubles uh, with me. I'm sorry, Harvey, but I've fallen in love with Ronnie. So you must take back your liver and go. <laughs> go and never again darken my sofa pillows with your hair oil. No. No, I won't let you make this sacrifice. I can see that it is him you really love. And besides, I'd rather go anyway. Well, if you're so set on going, stop at the grocery store and tell them to send over a can of sardines. Are you hungry? No. The goldfish are lonesome. Harvey, do you hear that? Do you know what that noise means? Faucet's dripping. <laughs> no, it means... It means... Ronnie is out in that storm. Run for your lives. The dam has burst. Just a minute. What dam has burst? Wouldn't you like to know? Thank you, thank you.
Thank you very much, Ronald Reagan. Mary Martin carries on now with The Way You Look Tonight. Lovely, Mary. Now then, Ken, how do things look tonight to you? Well, if the folks at your house like to sneak a bite between meals or at bedtime, you ought to know about Kraft's famous cheese food. Rich, yet mild Velveeta is the very thing refrigerator raiders love to find. Spread on crackers or sliced for sandwiches, this cheese food tastes mighty good. And mothers, it's okay. Velveeta helps supply valuable milk protein and milk minerals. It's an excellent food source of vitamins A and G and digestible as milk. These days, all you patriotic women are paying particular attention to planning well-balanced meals. You're probably following the federal government's official food guide that lists all of the foods that can help make America strong. Being a dairy product, Velveeta naturally deserves a place in your menus often. But we suspect that Dad and Junior and Sister will still want their snacks no matter how scientifically you plan your meals. So again we say, for snacks, get Velveeta, the nutritious, digestible cheese food the whole family will go for. Sing me a song of the island. My serenade that the trade winds know. Sing me a song of the island where hearts are high when the moon is low. Where rippling waters seem to say Aloha, va'e ahoe. Bring me the fragrance of ginger. Strum your guitar while I dream away. Sing. 
of the island. Aloha, va'e ahoe. Close tonight's business, friends. May we congratulate Station KFI on their 20th anniversary. Next Thursday, there'll be another meeting in the old Kraft Music Hall. And over and above our regular group, we'll have such, uh, such distinguished guests as Captain Floyd J. Sweet of the Army Air Corps Gliding Glider Training Detachment. That's next Thursday. Until then, think about this. Whatever it is you're doing now, it's, it's about an 8 to 5 shot that you're doing it because you want to. That's what this war is about. Your right to do what you want to do. Unless this war is won, yes, and until this war is won, nobody's going to be able to do just exactly what he or she wants to do again. So we've got to win. We're going to have to pack a heap of power, and it's going to take every man, woman, and dollar that we can scrape together. This is no small change job. This is it. So see your boss tomorrow. Tell him you want to double that dough that he's holding out of your salary for war bonds. There's no better time than right now to double up and beat the double dealers. See about that first thing a.m., huh? Good night. Six o'clock. I'll have to hurry. Bob will be home all in a flurry. Let me suggest macaroni and cheese, a dinner dish that's bound to please. But Mr. Grocer, I haven't time. Although your suggestion is very fine. Oh, yes, you have. Just get Kraft Dinner. Cooks in seven minutes. A surefire winner. Yes, in only seven minutes cooking time, you get delicious tender macaroni drenched in cheese goodness. You do it with a product called Kraft Dinner. One package serves four. Yes, four delicious servings of swell macaroni and cheese. Get Kraft Dinner for hurry-up lunches, dinners. Get Kraft Dinner tomorrow. Don't forget to tune in to Kraft Music Hall next Thursday. The Rudy Valley Seal Test Program with John Barrymore will follow immediately over most of these same stations from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>